I'll, uh, the word of life was come up, I'll ask Brooks. Invocation by word of life. Mr. Book, Brooks, you want to do it instead? Uh, <laughs> Coach Brooks, I should say. Okay, roll call, please. Sabres. Here. Goldhammer. Here. Dosher. Here. McCardle. Here. Barrington. Here. Baskey. Here. Charks. Here. Smith. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Approval of consent agenda items. Items appearing on consent agenda may be removed by a council member for discussion at the beginning of the formal agenda items. Is there anything anybody wishes to remove? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> yep, come on up. There is uh, quarterly reports from MADC. Okay. 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 Fire away. I'll wait till after the show. Oh, hold on. She's doing it first. Go ahead, if you'd like. Nope. Yeah. I gotta think about Thanks. it. Hold on. Then I'll go. <laughs> so um, this evening, I would just like to introduce our chapter, or excuse me, our chapter, our chamber director, Alex Heidinger. So um, she put this, um, not the video together, but the paper report. Do you want to just come up and then? Do you want me to go over yeah. there? While we're, while we're waiting on the video? OK, hi. Alex Seidinger here. Um, while we're waiting on this, um, we'll, we'll highlight everything in there, but I'm just, I'll just give a quick um, highlight on things from the Chamber and CVB. Um, one of our big uh, programs that we held th this last quarter was the Ag Seminar. Um, you might have seen updates in the paper from that. Um, we had Kyle Peters give an update on High Plains Processing, so it was really well received. Um, and then coming up, we do host a entrepreneurship program called Co-Starters, and we are hosting a two-day boot camp coming up uh, May 9th and 10th. So just wanted to get that on people's radars. And then um, on the CVB side, we do have um, a bunch of new billboards that we've put up with our tourism dollars. Um, so we're getting all of those that are on our docket refreshed and everything for tourism season. And then um, some things that are coming up, the new welcome sign for Mitchell will be going in um, pretty soon, year end of April or early May. So it's the Mitchell sign. Well, it's going to very much match like the Corn Palace sign out in the plaza. So we're sticking with sort of the cohesive branding of Mitchell and trying to make it all look put together. So, yes, it's going to be great. I, exactly. So those are kind of what we're spending our reserve dollars on. Okay. You ready for the video? I hope sure. Go right ahead. There we go. This is the quarter one report for 2024 for the Mitchell Chamber, CBB Development, and Co-Partnership. Starting off with the Mitchell Chamber, the Chamber hosted three ribbon cuttings this quarter, as well as welcomed a variety of new members. They also hosted an agricultural seminar called Harvesting Excellence on February 27th and added in the classroom for area fourth graders on March 19th. Leadership Mitchell session four, five, and six were held, including Mitchell Day at the Legislator. The Chamber also hosted popular legislators, State of the School Function, and the Legislator Cracker Barrel. There were two First Friday coffees this quarter, a panel on career growth, called Journey to Success, and multiple community concierge events, and the Chamber helped out at We Know at We Know Moving on to the Mitchell Convention and Visitors Barrel. There were multiple new interstate billboards that were put up this quarter on I-90 advertising for the Corn Palace and the Corn Palace gift shop. The billboards on the interstate have been in rough shape, and so we have put new ones up. Some of them are still awaiting final, but the designs are finalized. Um, and our next step will be to work on smaller privately owned billboards. Visit Mitchell also got a brand new website, and it's completed and live. It's the same URL at visitmitchell.com. Um, but it has a more user-friendly interface and a visually appealing design that has resulted in higher SEO, meaning that it is higher up when people Google things about Mitchell. We've already seen examples of this and a surge of visitor guide requests from our website. Quarter one is also the 2024 National Pheasant Fest. 
at the uh, Denny Stanford in Sioux Falls. It was a record-breaking event with almost 35,000 people attending, and we represented Mitchell Bell, handed out information about hunting and that, and had a lot of really great conversations. Moving on to the Mitchell Area Development Corporation. So the MADC just relaunched a new $1,000 relocation incentive program for people who are moving to Mitchell from out of state and living and working there full time. And this program is for people who have moved here on or after March 1st. The MADC also partnered with the Department of Labor to hold multiple workforce events, including a virtual one and a drive through hiring event um, that was held uh, in front of the chamber office. There were also multiple videos that were created to showcase different jobs that were available in Mitchell uh, to promote these events. The MADC was successful with two grants from the South Dakota Housing Development Authority, and these uh, grants will be housing rehab projects for the Mitchell area. The review on Foster Platt also passed both planning and zoning and city council. The MADC also conducted another round of business retention and expansion visits. These visits are through a partnership with the Governor's Office of Economic Development, Northwestern Energy, Central Electric Co-op, and the South Dakota Department of Labor. They also continue to work with Dakota Westland and the Secretary of State's Office on an economic report that is expected to be published in May of 2024. And they filmed and promoted the City of Mitchell Water Infrastructure in Expansion Project, which will double the city's water capacity in 2027. The MADC is also hosting a Workforce Retention Summit on April 18th in partnership with Dakota Wesleyan University. Lastly is the Dakota Heartland Development Association. Starting off with Corsica, uh, the development, uh, Dakota Heartland Development Association assisted in obtaining $500,000 of grant funding for infrastructure for the Southwest Business Park and funding from the GOED LIP grant assists funding a new $2 million 15 month business park across US 281 south of Corsica. Dakota Heartland also received in depth third party child care study results for communities in Hutchinson and Douglas counties. They also funded, this was funded partially through Northwestern Energy Grant. The studies show significant shortage of child care for zero to two years of age now and in the next five years. Dakota Heartland also attended the South Dakota Legislature, legislature on behalf of Corsica and Armour to thank them for their service and assistance. Corsica received a GOED lift grant for $500,000 for business park infrastructure, and Armour received a South Dakota Housing Infrastructure Grant for $675,000 for their 37 lot housing subdivision. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can I just a couple yep. updates? Okay, so. Um, the workforce retention is this Thursday. If you have anybody in your organization that works in HR or is, a, is, is concerned about retaining your staff right now, just let us know. We get them, we'll get them signed up for the, the summit on Thursday. Um, as far as an update on our incentives, we are, have given out six um, for the, new, new, the recent um, rollout of $25,000. In fact, we welcome David from Wyoming to uh, Twin City Fan today. It gave off that sixth um, um, incentive, excuse me. And um, the other thing I wanted to, we didn't talk on this, but I, is important, I think, for you to know is that um, we are working on retail recruitment. And right now we've had um, four restaurants um, show interest in coming to Mitchell. Nobody signed up or anything like that or made a decision, but we do have people looking at Mitchell to come. So any questions for me? Okay. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. Thank you. What about Perkins? Have you heard anything? We have. I just drove by there today. And That's all I can say. We have. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so keep watching. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a special event permit on here for a uh, shootout at the lake, which is the rodeo Friday, Saturday night at the old rodeo grounds. Uh, that is a noise permit, just so you're aware of it. Um, I also think that we there's cause for celebration because the pickleball grant was approved <laughs> which is fantastic I'm rejoicing about that so I just think that's worth pointing out that we're receiving 
um, <clears throat> the matching dollars for 50% of the cost of constructing those pickleball courts at Hitchcock Park. So play on. So exciting. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to address? I'll approve the consent agenda. Motion by Mr. McArdle. Second by Mr. Savers. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address any of these? Okay, roll call, please. Smith? Aye. Chart? Aye. Bafke? Aye. Barrington? Aye. McCardle? Aye. Dosher? Goldhammer? Aye. Sabers? Aye. Motion carries. Citizens input. If you need to address the mayor and members of city council on an item that is not on the agenda, excluding personnel items, please come forward to the podium, state your name and your concern. Presentations are limited to three minutes. Items will be considered, but no action will be taken at this time. I'd like to start off by asking Ms. Sawyer Stabner to come up here. If you don't know, she was awarded the Spirit of Sioux at the uh, South Dakota AA Women's Basketball Tournament, so we want to recognize her. And I have a proclamation. Anywhere right in here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You don't have to listen to that. You don't know us, but we all know you. There you go. Uh, proclamation in honor of Sawyer Stabner, 2024 Spirit of Sioux uh, Award recipient. Whereas the city of Mitchell believes that student athletes are an important part of the Mitchell community, whereas each year during the state girls basketball tournament, each participating team can nominate one player from their team to be considered for the Spirit of Sioux Award. Whereas to be eligible for this award, the athlete must be a senior on the team who demonstrates athletic ability sportsmanship, leadership, character, and academic ability. Whereas Sawyer Stabner was recognized and given the Spirit of Sioux Award during the 2024 Girls AA State Basketball Tournament, whereas this award and recognition given to Sawyer Stabner is admired and respected by the Mitchell community and demonstrates the character that Mitchell High School athletes possess. Whereas the City of Mitchell would like to recognize Sawyer Stabner for receiving the Spirit of Sioux Award and for representing the Mitchell community in such a positive way. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Mitchell wishes to convey this very special recognition by way of this proclamation to Sawyer Stabner in honor of receiving Spirit of Sioux Award in the 2024 Girls AA State Basketball Tournament. Dated this 15th day of April, 2024, signed Bob Everson, Mayor. You can say something if you want, Sawyer. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, Congratulations. I'll, Thank you for being a positive representation. I'll say something real quick, Sawyer. Sawyer, good luck at Black Hill State. And when you're done in college, you can come back to Mitchell, okay? There you okay. go. Does Coach Brooks, you want to say anything? I gave you the opportunity to say the prayer. All right. The season's over. Thanks for the community support over that, really. You bet. I just have one more thing. Be able to honor, so. I just want to say this one more thing about Sawyer. I have customers, um, you know, all over, and there were people that are my customers that were like, "What about Sawyer Stabner?" And they're coming from all around to our Corn Palace to watch Sawyer play. So thank you for that. Thank Congratulations. Okay. Anybody else wish to address council? Marin Council Chief Coster. I'd like to take a minute to just recognize our dispatchers. Uh, some of you may know this week is National Emergency Telecommunicators Week, where nationally um, agencies across the country recognize their emergency dispatch centers. We have a center here that dispatches for six counties, police, fire, and EMS. And there are people in Mitchell that don't know they even exist unless they have to call and need help from them. Um, it's a group of very dedicated employees. They deal with some of the most difficult situations, and they deal with it over the phone, which is challenging because they can't actually go to the scene and help. They have to be there on the phone and, and listen to these things unfold and send the responders that actually go there and handle it hands on. So I just want to take a moment to recognize them and ask that if you know one of those dispatchers that we have in Mitchell or in any other community for that matter, say thank you. Okay, we thank them for their service. Anybody else wish to address council? <coughs> Okay, have, board, oh, oh, oh. Oh, go ahead. I didn't know if someone else was going to come up. Um, so I got a message from um, someone who lives in town, and they asked that I convey this because they were not able to come tonight. Um, but apparently there, there was a pipe that broke. 
I know that I spoke with you about it, but I just wanted to, I promised him I would say something. So um, he said um, they had 400,000 gallons of water that poured into their church rectory. Um, it was Grace Reformed at uh, the Parsonage. I take it back at the Parsonage. And that no one picked up on it. And I know that we've had that discussion many times about we have these, our great meters now that are all you know, electronic, but... And I know that we've talked about that software that's cost prohibitive, um, but I did promise him that I would at least bring it up in the council meeting and just, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but maybe if we could revisit this and see if there's anything that we can do. Um, I know that we can't do anything because at, at this point they have a 4000 The church has a $4,000 water bill that they're paying. Um, but, and I know that we can work with them on that, and that really isn't the issue. I think that the thing is that, you know, that's 400,000 gallons of water. Where, where do they so, come up with 400,000 gallons of water? They, I don't know if they saw it on their water bill when they got it. How much? That would, I don't know that, <laughs> no, it wouldn't fill the lake, but it's a lot of water. It is a lot of water, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think telling. their bill would have been 4,000 if they had 400,000 gallons of water. To go what would it have been? Uh, anyway, I don't know. I'm just telling you. Okay. Yeah. So, I just think it's something that we should, I, I wish that we had that technology. I know that we had, I feel like it was also a Grace, wasn't it Carol Torgerson, Torgerson that also yes, had some? and He's yep. Grace Reform too, so I don't know. But they had a similar situation in their house, and I don't know how we, if there's something that we can do. But It I, takes all new meters that would do it, and they are very expensive. All, so. all new, like the ones that yes. we have couldn't interface no. at all. Could they, Joe? I think it's new meters. Yeah, our, our current meter that we have, we're, it's not set up that way, um, which I, we have to manually look through. It's not necessarily a... I mean, is there anything that shows when you have, like, you know, an unusual amount of water? They do. They, if they go through and see that somebody's using an unusual yeah. amount of water, they will call them, yeah. but it, it just happens to be if they catch somebody with a high water usage. Um, that accurate, Michelle? Is that how that software works? Yes, there's a report that can be run every so often, but sometimes it's too late by the time sure. that report is run. There's no alert that we get by any means. Yeah. No. Well, <clears throat> um, if we could just like keep that in our the forefront of our minds and see if there's anything that we might be able to do to help down the road yeah. prevent this from happening. I just want to say something. Sure. Come on, Mr. Clark. Well, it's been a while since I've addressed a group like this, so I'm a little nervous, which is rare for me. Um, I'm Brian Clock. Uh, I own Clockworks here in town. The last time I remember feeling this was when I went in front of the Sports and Events Authority, and I had to address them about this pre-Sturgis party idea that I had. Okay? I proposed a bold move at that point for motorcyclists to come to our town because they're not carrying all the things with them, right? So they're gonna use your restaurants, they're gonna use your hardware stores, they're gonna use your gas stations, they're gonna stay in your hotels, they're gonna stay at your campgrounds. And I heard a lot of grumbling about Brookings and Sioux Falls and all these cities, you know, Spearfish and Huron, and everybody's doing more than we are, okay? Well, I pound my fist pretty hard for Mitchell and for the state of South Dakota in general. And while I've traveled with the governor over to China to represent my brand, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw my parts in a Harley store in, Sh in Shanghai, in Beijing. We went on to Hong Kong, okay? So when I came home, I thought, you know what? The idea is you sometimes you have to take a bold move. You have to go outside of your comfort zone. You have to just do something you're not okay with, okay? In this case, I wanna talk about the lake. I know not everybody's cool with it. I know not everybody thinks we should dredge it. It's my opinion that if you look to Hanson Lake, you can see that the lake, it broke right? The same year I got flooded and lost a million dollars in 24 hours, okay? What are you supposed to do? Are you going to quit or do you step up? In this case, Hanson stepped up and now people are going over to Hanson Lake. 20, in 1928, people voted $350,000, which was an insane amount of money in 1928 when you could buy a car for less than $400, right? And they're out here saying, we'll, we'll bid three fifty. dollars to say we want to do this, this is our city, this is what we're going to vote on. Now we're faced with $25 million, which is doable because 
We still have the money. We still have been paying down things. I have the utmost of faith in you as a city council, you as a mayor or city administrator. I mean, you run this place very tight, okay? I've tried to get money for things like pre churches parties. It's tough, okay? At some point, I, I took $20,000 out of my own pocket to throw that party. Now, that may seem stupid to you, but those 5,000 people come to Mitchell on a Thursday night and the next time they come through town, they'll say, honey, we should stop in Sioux Falls. And the husband will say, you know what? Let's go to Mitchell. There's a little restaurant there and a hotel that I know, and the people are really nice. I was there on my way to Sturgis. That's a win for us, okay? We need to think long-term, just like we did with the pre-Sturgis party, which is now 5,000 people and is on the Department of Transportation's radar every year at Sturgis, that we're a big deal on this side of the state, okay? I'm going to encourage you to execute on the lake. Spend the $25 million, don't wait. When I first went to my first ever chamber meeting, when I got voted in there, everybody was hating on this mezzanine that you see out here right now. There was crazy discussions about you can't possibly shut down 6th Street. Now it's become a hub. Now we have First Fridays. Now it's a place for our community to congregate and gather. When I grew up in Emory, South Dakota, my goal was to come jet skiing that, that's the lake. three minutes. So. Perfect. And that's all I need to say. As a kid, I went here. I encourage you to bring more kids, bring more families here. Vote yes for the lake. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address council? Okay. Entertain a motion for city council to recess sit as the board of adjustment. Second. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Hearing an action on the application for Lori Schultz variance permit. Lori Schultz applied for variance permit for a front yard setback of 15 feet versus 25 feet to build a 17 foot by 9 foot front porch located at 714 East First Avenue, legally described as Lot 11, Block 21, FM Greens Edition. City of Mitchell, Davis County, South Dakota, said property zoned R2 single family. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council. Planning Commission recommended approval of this 6-0 with one absent. Um, it was published in the paper. No, neighbors were notified. Signs posted. Um, there were five letters in favor that were in the packet. We received one more today that was in favor. Did not have any comment, so I didn't print that off for you at all. Um, the applicant would like to put a front porch at, on her property um, for resale value, um, to put a roof over her front entrance when she comes in there, and also to help in the winter and the summertime for elements for heating and cooling her house as well. Um, she's not here this evening, um, but I can answer any questions that you may have for me. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Barrington, second by Mrs. Charks. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Hearing an action on the application of Lynn Ekman variance permit. Lynn Ekman is applied for a variance permit for a side yard corner setback of eight feet versus 20 feet to place a 12 foot by 20 foot storage shed located at 1528 Pebble Beach Road, legally described as lot 29, block four, Lakeview first edition, city of Mitchell Davis County, South Dakota, said property zoned R2. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor, Council Planning Commission recommended approval of this six zero with one absent. It was published in the paper, neighbors notified, signed posted. There were two letters in favor of this. Um, the applicant would like to put a shed on the northwest corner of his property. There's an existing cement pad there that he'd have to increase the size a little bit. Um, he'd like to store his race car in there and work on it. Um, there's a fence to the, uh, excuse me, to the west there. Um, it is a portable shed, but portable sheds are supposed to still meet um, setback requirements, and that's why there's the variance with this. Also, it's over the 200 square feet, so a building permit would be required for this as well. Um, applicants here, if you have any questions for Hamer, I can answer any questions as well. Motion by Mr. McArdle. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to set the date for Board of Adjustment Hearing 5624. Adam Cook has applied for a variance permit for a side yard setback of three feet versus eight feet to build a 26 foot wide by 68 foot deep attached garage located at 2212 Kelly Drive, legally describes lot one, except the west 150 feet, country living estates in the northeast quarter of section 14, township 103 north, range 60 west, 
of the fifth primary in Davis County, South Dakota, said property is owned UD Urban Development. Moved to set the date. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer. Second. Okay. by Mr. Sabers. Further discussion? Anybody in the ice wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action set the date for Board of Adjustment hearing 5624. Michael and Delana Kraus have applied for a variance permit for a combination of attached and detached accessory buildings of 2,716 feet versus 2,000 square feet to build a new detached accessory building of 2,040 square feet located at 1020 Chuck Stone Drive, legally described as Lot 1, Block 1, Northridge Park, City of Mitchell Davis County, South Dakota, said property is owned R1 single family. Set the date. Motion, motion by Mr. Goldhammer, second by Mr. Barrington. Discussion? Anybody in the eyes wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to set the date for Board of Adjustment Hearing 5624. Chuck Stevenson has applied for variance permit for a combination of attached and detached accessory buildings of 4,216 square feet versus 2,000 square feet to build a new detached accessory building of 3,312 feet located at 1114 South Harmon Drive. Legally describes lots 4 and 5A, Block 3, and that portion of vacated Indian Head Drive, all in Indian Head 2nd Edition, City of Mitchell Davis County, South Dakota. Said property is owned RL, uh, Lake Residential. Moved. Motion by Mr. McArdle. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Discussion? Anybody know I switched to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Entertain a mo motion for Board of Adjustment to adjourn City Council reconvene regular session. Motion by Mr. Barrington. Second. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Hearing an action on the application of VFW Post 2750 for a special event liquor license located at Horseman Sports Arena for June 21, 22, 2024 for the shootout by the lake. Mayor and Council, Chief Coster, we have no concerns of this and recommend approval. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Savers. Second. Second by Mr. Bathke. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Action to approve special event permit application for Dr. Lucky's Block Party Street Dance on Saturday, May 25th, 2024. Motion approved. Second. Motion by Mr. Sabers. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, we're just trying to bring some more people to Mitchell here. State, by state your name. Please. Jacob Stang. Uh, I run Dr. Luck I am the manager at Dr. Lucky's. Yeah. We just need to close off the second street, West Second, from uh, the Main Street to the alley, right next to our bar. There, um, we got approval from, or we talked to the people across the street from us, and asked if we could use their sidewalk during this event, and they said yes. Uh, we would like to start events. We're going to do some arts during the day, um, throughout the day, while the Main Street is also having some. Things with Mitchell Main Street and beyond, the car show and things. So um, our noise permit starts, I believe, at 6 and goes till 1.30, but I just talked to Tim about that, and he had some concerns about uh, resi our residents near there. So um, I'd be willing to move that back to midnight if need be. Okay. Um, we only, all we need is uh, for us is uh, mm -hmm. some road closure signs, road close signs ahead that we'd post a uh, half block in either direction. And uh, um, the 20 fence holders to help put fence across, or snow fence across from building to building in between both sides of the um, event area. Okay. Questions? Tim, you said you, this Tim? Yeah. yeah. You brought up a concern about noise. I mean, yeah, I just. Did you uh, hear from somebody or? Well, and so just in general, the 1.30 a.m. Uh, having concerts go that late in what would be perceived as a, also a residential area, I just thought if we could have, and I just asked him if it would be an issue with them or if, like, I didn't know what they had a concert schedule, and it sounded like you have one, maybe two artists scheduled, and so he didn't think it would be an issue to have the artists be done earlier, not necessarily stopping them from being outside, but just not having live music playing until 1.30 in the morning was a thought that I had. 
You're okay with that? Yep. That sounds good to me. Okay. So, so you made the motion and you second. Are you okay with that? I'll minute to the midnight. Okay. So we have can you can you move your the bands if you wanted them to go till one thirty to the inside of your? Yes, I could. Yep. Okay, Tim, are you going to second that amendment? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. So we have a motion to amend to midnight as the uh, noise permit. Per, uh, motion by Mr. Saber, second by Mr. Goldhammer. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay. First on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, now we have a motion by Mr. Saber, second by Mr. Goldhammer for the, to approve the special permit. Any further discussion on that? I just Permit and a street closure. Yep. Okay. Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. I just, we're still keeping all of the other times the same. I think it's just the yes. noise permit. Just the noise permit. Yes. Okay. All right. Good luck. Motion carries. Action to approve special event permit application for Arts in the Park on Thursday, July 25th through Sunday, July 28th, 2024. I think a couple people are trying to resurrect Arts in the Park, which would be nice. So, you want to come up here? Move to approve. Move to approve. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Second. Goldhammer. Mr. Barrington, second by Mr. Goldhammer. Okay, further discussion? All right, go ahead. My name is Jordan Hansen. I'm up here speaking for Nancy Kanzimus. So I'll give you a little bit of a background. So I've talked to a lot of people, and they all said we should bring back Arts in the Park, and Nancy's name came up a lot. She probably doesn't want me to talk about that. But she used to work at the event back in the day, and she really wanted to resurrect it. So I said, let's do it. Um, she had all the, the binders, like the old original pamphlets, the vendors, the maps, and all that stuff. I said, this is a this is easy. I can get on board with that. Um, something pretty much everyone can agree on. It's been 17 years since we had Arts in the Park, I think, like the, the original. Uh, 2007 was the last thing. So we've already talked to Steve Roth at the city. We went through, mapped the entire park. So on the top left, we're going to have vendor tents. They may not be, they're probably not going to be like multiple deep, it'll be just one line right down the bottom because he said if it rained, uh, it might wash out the grass and be all muddy and that's just no good. And then we're gonna have multiple porta potties, multiple garbages, uh, food trucks over there. I talked to Tim about that a little bit. Steve said that was okay. There's water there. They're gonna pull off the hydrants from the swimming pool area. There's electrical there hooked up for all that stuff. Um, it sounds like we may do a beer garden, but that won't be involved in this. The, the Lions Club may rent a space from us. It'll be all roped in 100%, so no one can be wandering around with beers. Um, I got a couple people that are involved that want to do like a kids event, so like a relay race, potato sack race, just like the old days. Uh, inflatables sound like it might go through. We for sure are having a, like a beanbag cornhole event. We have talked to people with a motorcycle and um, car show, at least Nancy. Nancy's done about, um, most of this work, by the way, just to let you know. Um, this is all her. Uh, we got a couple bands we can book. We're working on a pickleball tournament because everyone loves pickleball. I'm not a pickleball player. Um, yet. Not yet. I hear it's fun. Um, I want to give Stephanie uh, a big shout out. Like I submitted this at like 1046 at night. Um, Stephanie Owen, and she actually responded to me and was emailing me till 1130 at night. Yeah, which is crazy. Nobody else does that. And then she emailed me the next morning at 7 o'clock in the morning um, and started it up. And then I didn't realize I had to have it by Wednesday at noon. And I submitted it Tuesday at like almost midnight. So Aaron got, Aaron got a hold of it. We were coordinating all day. Got it on the agenda. So I appreciate everyone at the city getting it on the agenda so we didn't have to wait till f four or five more Mondays. Let's think. What else here? We would like some volunteers and uh, maybe some donations. So it looks like the average, like in Sioux Falls, they charge 500 bucks a day. We wanted to make sure this was a hit, so we charged $20 a day. So we're probably gonna take a gigantic loss the first year, um, just to make sure we can really bring um, people here to like pack it. It said like on those last ones, like 9,000 people on average used to come to this. That's three full corn palaces um, over the weekend. So pretty cool. 
Um, we, I made a poster, like a, a Facebook group, and it got like 20,000 views within the first 72 hours. So this is very popular. Someone called me from Sioux Falls and said his brother sent him from Minnesota. So it's like reaching very far and wide. Um, let me think, what else? Is there anything I'm missing, Nancy? We, start, we started a nonprofit. Um, it's not going to be done in, probably until next year because it's a long process for that. And that's about it. If you guys have any questions. Oh, yeah, we have 40, 40 vendors that have already reached out to us that have submitted applications. Spending, it gets approved. Um, we're looking to have over 100. Nancy's got all the, uh, the big file of like, vendors from like Brookings and Aberdeen and uh, Yankton and Sioux Falls. So she's going to do pretty much all the work. Um, I just submitted the application, going to help out with phone calls, and then the day of the event. It's all Nancy. She doesn't want me to say it, but it's true. Okay. Any other <laughs> questions? Okay. You may want to talk about including the farmer's market in on this event. That would be kind of... Yeah, absolutely. Nice We've had so many that. people reach out, and I'm like, really, I think we're okay with bringing everybody. Like, I, we've talked... Some people want to do a flea market, farmer's market... Really, I don't care as long as my insurance covers it. By the way, we got insurance, $3 million, so we're good to go there. Um, we added, I sent the email today, everything's good to go. So okay. we'll pretty much add whatever, whatever people want, as long as it's legal and covered by insurance. Okay, anything else for them? Thank anybody, you guys so much, appreciate it. Anybody else wish to address this? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Good luck. Thank you. Action to award bid for 7th and Main Traffic Light Project 2022-08. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, bids were opened on April 3rd, 2024 in Seattle Council Chambers at 1.30. One bid was received by Big Al's Contracting from Sioux Falls for $544,404.52. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $446 thousand two dollars and fifteen cents so roughly 19 percent uh, over the engineer's estimate uh, the bid tabulation is attached uh, for additional information the project did come in over budget um, but is under um, budget staff is recommending awarding uh, the bid to big house contracting uh, for the amount stated earlier project would start in the fall of 24 with a final completion date of april 1st uh, 2025 uh, the project includes new sidewalk and ADA compliant pedestrian crossings, along with new traffic signals and lights above the signals. And with that, I can answer any questions you may have. I got a question, Joe. We got stop signs 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Why don't we save a bunch of money and just put one on 7th Street? I mean, you, it makes yep. sense to me. Yep, you do have that option. Um, the, the traffic warrants are slightly under. Um, what is warranted for a signal? We definitely have some times where, um, you know, signals are definitely warranted uh, in the mornings, um, afternoons. Um, our, our traffic counts for that area um, kind of surprising. South, southbound on Main Street is our highest at um, 5,145 um, average daily traffic. Um, seventh and northbound is around 3,500. Just to put that into perspective, um, first and Burr sees roughly um, 9,600 northbound, but that is uh, two lanes. And southbound Burr is 4,800, with first being around 3,000 average daily traffic. Yeah, because it wouldn't be any different than first and Burr as far as traffic. I mean, it'd be less traffic probably. Like you it's said. slight. It's it's the trade-off. The northbound of Burr is is slightly higher, but the other Main on south is higher, and the side streets are have more traffic. I get used to going down Main Street, and I'll hit second, the stop sign, and third, fourth, and I'll get to Seventh Street, and sometimes the light will be red, and I'll think I'm at the stop sign. I'll, you get used to you know stop sign stop, and then sometimes sure. you go through a red light. Sorry, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch him. <laughs> it gets to be a habit. We have to rebid, Joe, if we're going to just if we're going to just stick with First Street, or would would these bids 
be okay with just having one set of lights? This is only seventh in May. So this is only seven. Yeah, yeah this is oh, correct. Three. This is only seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and, yeah. And I'm on the flip side of things. I, I take a look at seventh as being very similar to first. And I also take a look at it. We have the world's only cone policy next to 7th Street, which has a lot of pedestrian crossing going on, and stop signs don't yield to pedestrians as much as a stoplight will. So I'm on the other flip side. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but we have a lot of traffic right around the Corn Palace, and I think it serves very much to uh, have a light there and traffic signals going across. So I'll be in favor of this project instead of against it. And the reason we chose uh, 7th and Main first is that that intersection actually has more traffic than first and main. Um, if we didn't proceed with this project, uh, we would probably just leave up what we have now. Um, you know, as those those poles get rubbed, uh, you know, they get weaker. Uh, we did fix one on a few years ago. We fixed the one on first in Maine, uh, where we had to Bailey's have Bailey's come in and weld it. I do believe we have done that on the uh, northwest corner of Seventh and Maine. Um, so whenever one gets rubbed, you know, we're always worried it, it is going to come down. Um, you know, usually we're able to recoup our costs just because we, we can catch who did it. A lot of times it hangs the truck up because they'll blow a tire because um, they hit it. Um, Mike, you and Dan, um, as far as police and fire, um, is seven a major, I don't know which one would answer it, but... Um, and is it easier to get through a stoplight or a stop sign when you're in an emergency? It's never easy. It's never easy. Um, you know, it's, it's like Dan just said, it's never easy. Uh, you run a, you know, in my opinion, I think you'd have better traffic flow at that intersection because obviously they're headed to Queen of Peace a lot of times on that roadway. Um, my big concern would be what Marty said for pedestrians you have a game or you have a big event at the Corn Palace and you're trying to cross a mass amount of people at a stop sign, you're going to run into issues getting people across and cars yielding for them, where at the light, at least that pedestrian has a, a secured amount of time that they trust the cars are going to stop for that red light. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's your biggest safety issue is right there at the Palace trying to move people because we've got city parking lots on the west side of the street and people coming and going back and forth to those retailers. Um, we'll make do with what we have to do as far as emergency vehicles. I mean, that's, that's the nature of our job. Chief Polarized, do you change the light with the ambulance if you need to? Not at that intersection. Okay. I um, am on the same wavelength as Marty. I am trying to imagine not having a light at that corner. There, you know, you've got on one corner, and often they coincide. You'll have, you've got the community theater, and you've got the Corn Palace. There are so many things that are happening all the time. I think um, we're all familiar with those times when there's traffic going nonstop, and we have to find a place to park far away. And trying to imagine doing that and getting people where they're trying to go without uh, light, I think would be, I, I don't know, I feel like it'd be dangerous. I feel like it's just something that we we need to do. So I'm going to be in support of this as well. I'm not opposed to having lunch there. We have lunch there now. I just am opposed to spending half a million, over half a million, to get new lights there. These lights are serving a purpose now. Let them continue to serve a purpose. Are they reparable? Can we fix them? They're working. They're working, but can we stabilize they keep getting them? Hit or? By semis. The so they, they are getting outdated. This will move them out of, um, out of the path of the semis. Yeah, we are. The new project will move the poles outside so they're no longer getting hit, hopefully. I mean, I should say, yeah, nothing is, everything's a target. Um, but, yeah, we do, we currently do have parts. Um, Josh Harvey with traffic has never come to me and said he can't find something because if we couldn't find something, we would take the lights down and we would put up stop signs at that point because we can no longer operate them. Um, but, yeah, they're... It's it's getting outdated. It's on timing. Um, there's no loops at that intersection. There's no radar indication. Um, so it's just cycling through its its um, timing that's programmed. Joe, on the bid tab, it shows the engineer's estimate as forty thousand for the video detection system. They're thirty-three thousand dollars more. Did they miss something or what? I asked 
um, HDR that question because the two the big two big items that are different um, are the mobilization and the the video detection software. Um, and they, they didn't have a great explanation. They said that, you know, those two items were worth $50,000. Um, and they said either the, the vendors um, were off on their quotes they gave them um, or the company installing raised the price. It's hard to say. It's unusual to get one bid, isn't it? I, I asked that question. Um, I talked to uh, some of the people who were quoting. Um, they said they they tried to get additional interest. This is kind of a a unique um, project. You know, not a lot of you typically. You know, you need the main work in this is electrical, um, but the the prime is not an electrical. So I mean, it's it just who wanted to prime and who didn't, and I don't know how many how many electricals quoted uh, Big Al. So it's. Yes, when you get, I, I agree with you. When you get one bid, it's tough. It's tough. I, I don't think rebidding would get us a better number. Um. So, Joe, we've budgeted, obviously, ample amount of funds, but the engineer's estimate, what, what do you think the difference was there of why they came in so low? You know, they deal, they have a lot of work in Sioux Falls, in the oh. bigger cities, and it could be more competition. Um, they do. They do a lot more. You know, usually this work is in a bigger, a bigger city where there are a lot more traffic signals or a lot more um, companies. Um, to have a Sioux Falls guy come into Mitchell, that tells me that um, our locals weren't necessarily comfortable uh, taking it on. And that was the one guy from from Sioux Falls that decided to come over and bid it. Will this include the um, the unit that the fire are able to use to to lock everything down as they go through there? Is that yes, it will. part of this? Yep. Okay. So we have um, four hundred and four forty six budgeted. Well, the engineer's estimate. So was that? But that was not budgeted. So what's what? We have ten thousand dollars of play. Yeah, five sixty, I think, or roughly. Uh, five, oh, five fifty-five was what was budgeted. Right. So it's under what we budgeted for it, but higher than the estimate. So we knew it was going to be spendy. It's just we came in a little, little higher than what we thought. My last thought of the project is: if you think a stop sign needs to belong there, then obviously you wouldn't want to support this. But if you think a light needs to belong there, then you can pay for it now at the amount that we have budgeted, or we can pay for another hundred thousand, probably two more years. Things aren't going to get any cheaper. It, they're just going to keep on going up. So if you think it needs to be a stoplight there and it belongs there, then you might as well pay for it now than later. What, what about waiting, Joe? It's it, being in the field of contracting. Now it's a, it's a contractor's market right now. What if we wait till October and tell them they got to do it the following year? Do you think we'd do better and get more participation? It's tough to say. Uh, I do know we would have to probably budget another 20%. Um, I think we cut it. We cut it for the 22 budget. We've cut it out of the last two or three budgets. And since then, I'd say the estimate has at least doubled. It's just it's it's hard to to. To guess that. Okay, we need an emotion. Well, I'm going to move approval of the Big Al's contracting from Sioux Falls for five hundred and forty-four thousand four hundred and four dollars and fifty-two cents. Okay, most most by Mr. Chark, second by Mr. Barrington. Further discussion. Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Uh, roll call, please. Dosher? No. McCardle? As long as one works, no. Barrington? Aye. Bathke? Nay. Charks? Aye. Smith? Aye. Sabres? Aye. Goldhammer? Nay. Okay, four to four. Four. This is an expenditure. I can't load on it, so it fails. 
Action to approve the relocation of three handicap signs within the second Lawler parking lot. Mr. Schrader. Yes, Mr. Mayor Council. So this is in the um, second and Lawler parking lot. Um, they are currently located in the middle of the parking lot. Um, we're proposing to move them to the south side of the lot, uh, adjacent to the, the sidewalk that's along uh, a second. Um, that puts them closer to uh, the AS ADA accessible crossing at the corner. Um, and also, every now and then in the middle of the parking lot, they get hit and knocked over. So with that, we would uh, recommend your approval to move those three handicap signs. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Discussion? Anybody in the United States address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those nay. Motion carried. Action to approve ratification for pipeline easement north of ground storage tank with northern natural gas. Mr. Schrader, you going to start this? Yep, Mr. Mayor Council. Um, this easement is located um, north of our groundwater storage tank um, on the piece of property that we just recently acquired um, from the people who own the um, livestock yard. Uh, they had a easement agreement with that previous owner um, but filed it after we purchased. So we are, are acknowledging that easement. Um, and we also put some language in there that they cannot uh, prohibit us from uh, installing utilities within that area. So that I would recommend approval and allow the mayor to sign. Motion by Mr. McCardle, second by Mr. Bathke. Further discussion? Anybody in the ice wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve agreement A202415, Davidson Rural Water Service Standing Release Agreement. Mr. Johnson. All right. So uh, th this agreement itself is meant to deal with a fairly specific situation that may come up from time to time. Um, that situation really is where... Uh, some existing customer of Davison Rural Water um, is being served by them or was recently served by them and they're looking to do some kind of an improvement or development um, on their property and the needs for that project exceed what Davison Rural would be able to provide to them. Um, so what this agreement contemplates is that uh, Davison Rural would enter into a release agreement with that individual customer or property. And this agreement uh, basically just lays out some basic terms as to how the city and Davison Rural would be treating those release agreements. Um, essentially, they're all going to be on a case by case basis. Um, Davison Rural isn't waiving any of their territorial service rights or anything like that you know, except as may be specifically outlined in those individual releases. So that's the basic concept of this. Um, you know, it's not going to be something that happens a lot, but it will probably happen frequently enough where we want to have an agreement like this in place so everybody knows what the process is going to be. So with that, I can open it up to any questions. Have you had a discussion with their attorney, Justin? Yep, yep. Uh, this was mutually drafted uh, between myself, uh, Skylar Mickelson, and Don Peterson on behalf of Davis and Rural Water. There'll be no extra fees or anything like that we were going to try before? Uh, nothing specific to the city in regards to these types of releases. Um, the terms of the individual releases themselves are going to be between Davis and Rural and the individual person getting released. So whether they need to build in some kind of a fee, that's going to be for them to work out. This agreement doesn't put any fee on the city. This also doesn't obligate the city to, if Davison Rural Water releases somebody in some capacity to then to take on that person, if unable to? Uh, no, we're, we're not required to take anybody on that we don't have to, or that we're not interested in taking on. Um, I'll move to 
Okay. Motion by Mr. McCardle. Second. Second by Mr. Goldham. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed right. nay. Motion carried. Action to approve agreement 8 2024 construction engineering for Jetty and Marina Bike Trail Project 2023 with Bros Engineering. Mr. Schrader. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, Council approved Bros Engineering to proceed with the design of the Jetty Sidewalk Project on October 17th of 22. Uh, the Marina Improvement Phase 1 and 2 project was approved at the April 1st, 2024 Council meeting to soak up construction. The attached agreement with Bros Engineering is to provide construction phase services. Uh, their work will include project management, construction staking, construction observation, material testing, project admi administration, and closeout. Staff recommends council approval of the attached agreement with Bros Engineering at an hourly not to exceed basis of $222,930 uh, for the items described above. And I can answer any questions you may have. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Action to approve agreement A202417. Memorandum of understanding between the City of Mitchell Teamsters Local Union Number 120. Ms. Elwine. Mayor and Council, following the Council's decision to add two additional full-time patrol officers to the City of Mitchell Police Department. It opened up the opportunity for us to talk about some different scheduling options with the Teamsters Union. Uh, we began negotiations with the Teamsters to ensure that any changes that were necessary to allow those schedule changes to be incorporated were discussed and agreed to by both parties. The current union contract that we have is in place until December 31st, 2025. So this is really a mid-contract agreement that will carry forward to the end of the contract. Following that time, it would have to be incorporated when I do negotiations for the next contract. Uh, uh, we did come up with a few changes that were necessary in order to allow that 12-hour rotation. Uh, the union and city staff were both in, in agreement with the proposed changes, and we did review those as part of the negotiations with city council. Uh, I just want to publicly say that we really do appreciate the recommendations that the Teamsters Union also provided and really just the efforts on both parties to try to improve the options available for patrol officers. Both of us at both sides agree that we think this will lead to some better work-life balance and hopefully help our recruiting efforts for the department as well. Um, with that being said, I can certainly answer any questions about the MOU. Otherwise, the city recommends or the staff recommends approval of the MOU between the Teamsters and the city of Mitchell. I think this is a good, great idea for the police officers. I'll move to approve. Second. Most by Mr. McCarl. Second. I think Mr. Barrington, do you do that? That sounds good. <laughs> Public <laughs> safety, let's keep it going. Second by Mr. Barrington. All right, further discussion? I just wanted to mention, too, that this, I think this is a tremendous proposal. Um, we, we all know how tight the employment market is, and when you have to approach somebody and say you will be working every other weekend and you're you have a family young or old uh, it, it basically is just very difficult to try to convince somebody that uh, you're going to be working every other weekend and it's this is going to be such a relief I think Mike that you can go and sit down and say now it's you know we're loosening this up and, and you can we can schedule it out and so you've got a, a family event or or whatever the case may be, or vacation, you can schedule around that. So I think that's going to be a tremendous asset uh, for for us. Plus, we're adding two more patrol officers, so there's nothing wrong with that either. I will make one additional comment. The change that you see listed in the vacation hours—that's really just to reflect the way that we do it now. It didn't really match the language in the contract, and we all thought it was confusing, and so we just updated it to match what the current practice is for how we credit those vacation hours based on the different schedule that they're assigned to. Okay, further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Action to approve agreement A2024-18 in agreement with Confluence for Professional Services, Ms. Elwine. <coughs> 
second, I'm getting it pulled up here for you. Um, included in the packet was an agreement for professional design services between the City of Mitchell and Confluence. Confluence is a landscape architect that we have used that did the design of the Corn Palace Plaza, the streetscape, as well as the features on Burr. The intention would be to uh, do some uh, concept planning of how that additional space that the city will have access to um, where the existing scoreboard building is once that building is removed. So we'll go through a workshop and then do some discussions on how that program or how that space could be used. And the final result would end with a 3D illustration of the preferred, um, the preferred outcome that we could review with council. The intention is that we would like to have have the ability to go to construction in 2025. So we know that by fall, we anticipate that the city will receive that scoreboard building back that we could then remove the building during the fall, early spring, and then start construction next year on the additional plaza space. I can answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, um, I recommend approval of the agreement. Stephanie, uh, one yep. question. I assume this conference will work in conjunction with the Brady Yep. Yep. Yeah, I would see them be involved in, as part of that concept planning process, but really we wouldn't be into construction till next year and we would budget that next year. The city did receive some funding from the sale of the property to do that um, expanded plaza space. Did that answer your question, John? Okay. Yep, and I know that that's the Bradley's intention as well. They're, we're trying to make sure that this feels like an entire entertainment space and it feels consistent throughout the area as well as our streetscape that we've done for improvements and then the improvements on Burr as well. Are the same people um, on employed at Confluence? Confluence, I never can remember where that accent is. I know, um, as the people that actually did the plaza. Yeah, that would be Lyle. Yeah. He's and gonna so, be the one working on so it. So I think Jan, um, Jan actually had a relationship. She was on that committee when we were doing the that space. So I think that she they would, they're familiar with each other and they would work well together. I'm sure that'd be great. And, and you did note also, Stephanie, that in, on your um, weekly report to the council that you're going to make sure all the players are, yep. are there and walking through. And, and I think John's probably correct. It, it probably wouldn't hurt to have the Bradleys actually yep. at those meetings. So as we're walking through, so that way they've got some input. Yep. Can... So in that initial workshop, it's about a four hour session. I would assume we're going to have someone from the chamber, CVB, Corn Palace staff, probably have a member or two of city council. Bradley's obviously with them adjoining the space and we'll walk through those concepts and, um, if you haven't had the chance to work with Lyle at Confluence, he just does a really good job of gathering that input and kind of taking it where it needs to go without us realizing we're doing it at the time. So I, I just think he does a tremendous job planning and creating a space that is a usable space that people enjoy. Okay, anything else? Entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Barrington, second by Mrs. Charks. Further discussion? <laughs> Excuse me. Anybody know I we should address this? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those nay, motion carried. Action to approve resolution R2024-27, create tax increment district 33 and approve project plan. Mr. Johnson, are you leading this? Yep, I can start just start us off here. Um, so tax increment district number 33, as you see, relates to uh, property um, at the Iverson Auto uh, Dealership. This would be the south portion of the, the main dealership. Um, I think commonly known as the Ram Truck Center, it says in here. Um, the idea would be to relocate uh, what used to be the Palace Motorsports business to this new location, um, and then they would expand their operation um, at this new spot. Uh, so boundaries were set um, based off of some uh, recent platting that was done in the area to make the, the boundaries usable. Um, if you go down, Stephanie, to the, yep. That's what I was originally, where it shows 
the existing remodel and then they expand. Right. Yep. Yep. So you can see on this photo the, the existing building and where the, the remodel and expansion will be going. <clears throat> um, if you want to go to the project cost breakdown, um, you'll be able to see um, in their project costs they're showing, I believe it's 750000 in what we consider TIF eligible expenses. Um, and you'll also notice on that page, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, you'll also notice on that page at the top that their request, um, which the amount for, that the TIF will actually be is 715. So they've got more costs that are eligible than what the TIF is going to generate. So the TIF is going to be limited at what it can generate at that 715.303 projection. So even though they've got additional costs that would be eligible, the amount is capped out at what the projection is showing, and that's what the TIF value will, will end up being is the 715. Um, other than that, um, you know, it's very similar to past TIFs that we've approved. Um, many, much of the language is the same, um, has those same boilerplate terms. Um, it's structured the same as a grant pass-through. Uh, the max term on it is 20 years. Um, Stephanie, I guess any other? Um, the, the only other thing I guess I would point out is the project plan does anticipate that there would be job creation with the expansion in the um, location of the new business there as well. I believe it was 20 to 25 jobs in the project plan. And the project plan is being submitted as economic development to the state of South Dakota. Just like previous project plans or TIF requests or applications, um, it's contingent on uh, the state approving it as economic development for the TIF to go forward. Otherwise, the TIF will automatically dissolve in the project plan language. Okay. Stephanie, on the page 17, go to the bottom of it there. I think they have a number wrong. Unless, unless they're adding on to the, the Ram Truck Center too. Yeah. They are adding on to that building also. Oh, that's what I was trying to show on that one map. I'll pull that up again. It's kind of dark, so it's hard to see. And I, I should say for council's purpose too, uh, I know Jason Stober is here. If anybody has any questions, they can certainly ask him about the expansion. I'm going to make it really big, make it easier to see. So that's the existing building. This square over here is all addition. What I'm saying is, so the building's 60 by 150, and they're showing 620 feet of wall. That doesn't add up. That's why I'm wondering, are, are they adding on to the actual RAM center on that, what I would say, the west side? Yes. So like there you go. Here. There you go. So they are adding on there, too. Okay. Jason, okay. <laughs> when I blew it up, it was all blurry too, and I'm like, maybe I'm missing. Well, something. it's yes. Uh, Jason Stabner, CFO with Iverson Auto. I've got J.R. Heidinger. He's uh, the CEO at Iverson Auto, and he's actually half owner of Iverson Power Sports. So, um, what was your question, Jeff? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. When they blow it up, you can't see the addition, and your your numbers don't tie out for 620 feet of crossfitting. So I'm like, the and, yeah, and it's actually the that was uh, what, draft number one, right? <laughs> so go ahead, Jr. Pre, this was the first one we submitted in to get in time. Um, previously, because of the layout, to where it um, is. Yeah, sorry. Previously, we submitted this one. Um, the the footing, the numbers. That she said we're right. We're going to put a. The plan is a 60 by 150 addition to the east of the current facility. There will be no construction to the west. Everything will go to the east, um, and it's that unit is a 60 by 150 addition. Then your numbers don't tie out because you've got 620. That's why I like. What page are you looking on? 17. I took those off from the bid, so not not really relevant to the. Well, the, the, the total cost because my my question is, I, I know you guys do a lot of tiffs. This is my second go around tiff. Never, I guess I feel like it's a grant. We're giving you a grant to build this building, and uh, I guess when I think of a tiff, I think of uh, I believe John Clark got one for the apartments, 
for the street and infrastructure. I can see what the taxpayers are mis getting for their money, I guess, because it's your tax money. Uh, but I feel like we're financing your project. And we are financing your project. And it's economic development. I'm for the project. I just think that I had, I had somebody question me, why are we giving him a TIF to pay for part of his building? It should be for the infrastructure. And I know that you've, you've met all the parameters to do this. It's just a question. That increment wouldn't be there if we didn't go forward with it. Yeah. So right. we're yep. just getting the increment back on that portion for investing the $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. I would say it's similar to the other projects that we've done on Main Street with a um, couple different apartment buildings that have been remodeled. We just recently approved, didn't we approve the depot one? Yeah. And that one might not be all the way through yet, but it, it would be consistent with what the city has approved for other TIFs. There is a planned expansion of employment there too, correct? Absolutely. Um, right now, I, I mean, we, I've been since January 1 actively over at um, the former Palace Motorsports building and um, a great business that was in this town that was, that was not allowed to grow because of the inability for, for his expansion, okay? Whether that was on his case or not. Um, I don't have room to add a technician right now. Um, I'm scheduling people out two, three weeks, and I have technicians. We have a tech program in this community that I have went to the tech school to be a to be a scholarship sponsor for tech students to come through the program. And I need, I want to have eight to ten technicians back there. We have two currently. Um, I want to do two to three setup techs, detail techs. Um, I hired one salesperson. I hired one office manager. I hired an additional parts guy already to be in the facility we are in and know we need to keep building for, to keep expanding for more. So this is, this will allow us to grow the, the, the existing company to where I think there, it, it could go to service a lot of, and generate a lot of, I was just going to point Business. out also to council on page eight, it shows what the statutory items are that allow, uh, are allowed in the TIF. Now we do these as a grant, but we do still ensure that everything that's listed in the grant still meets the requirements in state law, which is items one through eight, starting at the bottom of page eight. That answers your question? Yep. Okay. Anything else? So JR, it's probably safe to say we're losing losing business to Sioux Falls because we don't we can't service them. In, in my opinion, from what I've seen in the 100 plus days we've been there, yes. I mean, we are, and I um, went and sat on the advisory council at the tech school and spoke with the guys at Mettler's and um, had the same agreement as we had. Um, it's, I think we have a unique ability within this community with what our, with what Mitchell Tech offers that we can really make a big difference. And that's where we we are backing that. We're financially going to pay students. We're going to we offered to them to pay student schooling to be able to bring students back into the Mitchell community for long term employment and hopefully plant some seeds and stay here. Yeah, I would also just uh, echo that just a little bit. As somebody who's recently looking at purchasing a motorcycle, the closest dealership was in Sioux Falls for those items at this time. You did have one Indian motorcycle on your website, but by the time I got there, it was sold. So, um, kind of disappointed in that. But we're we're still looking. So yes. Okay, we'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer, second by Mrs. Charks. Further discussion. Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Good luck. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Second reading on Ordinance 0 203 rezoning Lot 4 and North 5 feet of Lot 5, Block 11, D.A. Scott's First Edition, City of Mitchell, Davis County, South Dakota, from Central Business to R4. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, as you recall, this pla past Planning Commission 7-0, published in the paper, neighbors were notified, signs posted. There was one letter in favor for it, one letter opposed with concerns for traffic. Um, because it could be multifamily there with R4. Um, their intention is to put a governor's house on that location. Um, I've spoke, actually spoke to the owner today about 
how fast he can proceed to move forward with the project. So there's been no other um, inquiries or anything about this project. I can answer any questions that you may have for me. Go ahead, Mr. Pilsen. Uh, I'm correct in the picture shows buildings and things there completely vacated. Yeah, it, it's vacated off. The, none of that stuff is there. We do the, this is from the uh, pictometry flyover that the city and county does every three years. This was done in 2020. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Sabres. Second. Second by Mr. Bathke. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed motion nay. adopt. Motion, motion by Mr. Sabres to adopt. Second by Mr. Barrington. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address the adoption? Roll call. Barrington. Aye. Bathke. Aye. Charks. Aye. Smith. Aye. Sabres. Aye. Goldhammer. Aye. Dosher. Aye. McCardle. Aye. Motion carries. Hearing and first reading on ordinance 020-2404, rezoning a portion of lot 1 and lot 10, block 1B, Ridgeview on Foster Edition from Urban Development District to R3 Medium Density Residential District, portion of lots 6 through 10, block 1B, Ridgeview on Foster from R4 I density residential to R3 medium density residential portion of track DR1-A Ridgeview on Foster Edition from R3 medium density to R4 high density. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, Planning Commission recommended approval of this 6-0 with one absent. Uh, published in the paper, neighbors are notified. Uh, signs posted. There were two letters returned in favor of this. Um, as you are all aware of the area out here, um, it was replatted recently. And in putting the two plats together, notice that there were a couple of overlapping areas that did not, the zoning does not match what they were intended for the, the bigger parcel of land. So there's three little sections there that need to uh, be changed. Uh, Stephanie, can you go down to the next one, please? This one? Uh, just scroll down to, the, so that was the existing. Um, the scroll down a little bit further has that one has what the R3 was intended for the north portion, and so um, the south lots on that block are including in the R3 now, whereas before it was R4. The urban development was where the road was, and there's that little triangle that was R3 because there was a little notch in the previous plat. So I can answer any questions that you have for me. No questions. Entertain a motion. This is first reading. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second. Done by Mr. Goldhammer. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address it? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We're adjourned.